What's up, people of YouTube? This is Drew Willard here, and I'm on a podcast today, Jay. Also, we have guests Tori and Drax. Hey. And this is the Next Gen podcast, and we're going to talk about movies and games in our little community. We have a few topics here to talk about, and they're all pretty interesting, so that we should have a little bit of something for everyone. First off on the list, we actually have Star Wars episode official movie title is The Force Awakens. Um, I don't know much about Star Wars. I haven't watched it really or done anything with it. So if you guys want to lead us into this topic, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah so this was announced via Twitter on the 6th of November. Um, I'm really excited for this. I'm a big, huge fan of Star Wars. I love the, love the films. Um, I love the prequels more than the previous three that we've had. I don't yeah. know about you guys. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens. How cool is that? I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it for once. This is a little bit kind of, um, it's not really off topic, but you said you like the prequels more than like kind of sort of the original sort of. Um, the, and if the originals I meant, sorry. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Well, if um, you go back and you kind of look at the original movies compared to what they make nowadays, the originals are like vintage and classic, so, so it's something that people that. like a lot. But if you look at what they make nowadays, how like in depth they can go with like the money they spent putting into it, yeah. it looks better visually, but it doesn't have the same authenticity as yeah, the same so, feel. Yeah, this was like a lot different um, yeah. story wise and, and stuff because I don't know people write differently. I mean, it's going right. out in a year's time from now, so 18th of December 2015. I mean, they, I'm, I've heard rumors that there's, they've done with the trailer, so they, I'm guessing they will uh, will be showing the trailer probably either end of next month, early 2015, so looking forward to that. I'm pretty interested, I'm just not, you know, I'm not like too excited. I don't like to get too excited for new things, because then when it, turn, it comes out, is sometimes yeah. will suck, and then you're like really bummed out. So I'm just like, well, yeah. I'll wait and see how it turns out. I'm like, normally hoping when you see the trailer, that it turns out yeah. well. Normally when you the trailer, trailer was pretty cool. Yeah, it shows you normally get excited, don't you? If, you, if the trailer's good, then you know the movie's gonna be good. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like sometimes, yeah. Not sometimes always. the trailer's good. And the yeah, not all, not all the time. I just saw a um, a video on this channel. It's basically a top ten channel, and the name of the video was "Top Ten Trailers That Were Better Than the Movies." So that, that's just kind of funny that you mentioned that. So I've got a little bit of a premise. It's set approximately thirty years after the defeat of the Empire and the demise of Darth Vader. The plot follows a trio of young leads, along with characters from the previous installments. So we already know that there's going to be um, quite a few cameos and quite a few of the previous characters as well so and uh, as yeah. well as new ones as well so i'm sure jj abraham yeah i really movie. like when they bring back yeah, good job. old characters yeah. i know that gonna be following the book there's books yeah, you didn't books. know that i didn't know there was books <laughs> really <laughs> no i didn't know. Like it's a whole like what book started the whole something. thing yeah i had no idea there were star wars but i'm sure i'll get some hate for uh, that <laughs> they got a tv series as well which um really? uh, yeah i knew about the tv series yeah well, are you talking about um what was it, the Clone Wars or whatever? Yeah, Star Wars, the Clone Wars and all that. Yeah, that's like the prequel to the prequel, I guess, the prequel to the movies. It, it follows Anakin Skywalker and him eventually in the end uh, turning into Darth Vader and stuff. So, you know, he was a pretty good character and then yeah, kind of went back. Speaking of which, I guess this is, uh, since we're talking about TV shows, moving on and transitioning into new topics. This topic isn't in our list here, but does anybody here watch The Walking Dead? people who like it but i haven't I really seen too much absolutely love the walking dead and due to the call of duty advanced warfare release i didn't get to watch last week's episode but i will be watching it tomorrow night <laughs> yeah i've heard um, a lot of um, good reviews about that show a lot of people are yeah. really you know over excited of that but they're all telling me at work why do you watch it why do you watch it about this never have time you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's definitely worth the watch so like um, if you ever get the chance, if you have Netflix or you, you can go buy the seasons, definitely do it because yeah. it will blow you away. A lot of people see The Walking Dead and they're like, oh, it's just another stupid zombie movie, right? Yeah. But once you actually go and watch it, the zombies are like a side factor. It's like 80% people and what they're going through, 20% zombies. Um, there's, there are parts where it's really gory, but actually um, out of an entire season of like 16 episodes, you'll probably get four or five of those episodes that have some really gory parts. Is this like the fifth series? This is the fifth or sixth season. Fifth, fifth season. season. Fifth? Yeah. I'm only on the fault myself right now. Um, very, very, very good show. Give it a 10 star rating. It's the only thing I actually watch on TV because I'm so busy with everything <laughs> else. It's the only thing I set aside time for is The Walking Dead. Yeah, well, what do you like about it so much? 
um, basically it's how attached you get to the characters. The acting yeah. in that show is phenomenal. And like every death that happens, I'm not going to give spoilers, but every death that happens, you feel it. Like you yeah. literally, it's like it hits you in the chest. And it wow. sucks, but it's so good at the same time. Yeah, character okay. development is like really important. And yeah. some movies do it like really well. Like you make like a really great connection. Because you have these characters from the first season that have been there this whole time that have survived everything. And then the next thing you know, they're gone. I know they've got a video game coming out as well. The, actually, The Walking Dead comes from a comic book series, something that I do know. The Walking Dead comic books do not follow the movie. Like, they don't connect with each other, but there are some things that do. So they actually made a video game series called The Walking Dead by Telltale Development Company or whatever. And that okay. game also has really good character um, buildup. And I will tell you something, okay? I am a six-foot, 300-pound guy. And I don't cry very easily, but that game made me cry. <laughs> that game was very good. <laughs> and the inning was so intense with Clem and Tom and Lee, man. Just very, it was very good. They just came out with a new season not too long ago, actually. I, yeah, I played that all the way, too. <laughs> all right, moving into the next topic here, we have the Fast Furious 7 trailer. The, the, there, was, there was a lot of action in that, just in that few second clip. I mean, the way they handled, I mean, the way they handled Brian O'Connor, you know, Paul Walker, <sighs> who died last year. Yeah. The way they handled, I thought they would like, I don't know, show us a sad, a sad scene or... Where he know, dies? Like, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, when they retire him in the movie, but no, they just yeah. gave us something that was worth watching, you know, that got us hooked completely. I mean, I it, cannot wait. It's got The Rock, it's got Vin Diesel, it's got Paul Walker, it's got everyone, even the previous cast in there as well. It's got um, that transporter, what's his name? Jason Statham. Yeah, yeah Jason, Jason Statham. Oh, he he, he acts in a really, lot of it. It was very I hope good. He goes up against The Rock. Vin Diesel and The Rock, you know, <coughs> for those fights. We all know that. Yeah, kid, for kid sure. Baby yeah, is, in his uh, movies, perfect. yes. But in, in all honesty, The Rock would probably kick his ass into the ground. <laughs> I agree. Oh, definitely. Did you see the way he ripped off his, his um, casket? Who needs this? I can fight with a broken arm. Because I'm The Rock. I swear he gotten bigger. He looks big. All right. I, have, yeah, I haven't seen anything about Hercules or anything like that. Yeah, I've um, seen it. I've seen it. So, can we all agree that Fast and Furious 7 trailer looks amazing? The fact that they didn't kill off... Um, Paul Walker in the movie is yeah. pretty surprising. I mean, we don't know that they won't kill him off because they kind of have to in some they way. Will, they will retire him in the movie. They will yeah, will like, retire him. there has to be some way to. If not, then this will be the last movie. They did say in the movie, though, uh, Vin Diesel said one final ride or something yep. like that. So you said. never know. It could be the end. Yeah, that's true. They make another one. These movies have made a, a ton of money for them. I bet. Yeah, and that's yeah. all about the money, right? Four, five, four, five, and six are, are, are absolutely amazing. One, two, yeah. and three completely sucked. I did not, I did not like one, two, or three. Really? I liked them. I did not. Like I liked them. the first one okay. I did not like the second one at all. I have the second them. one. I like Tokyo Drift, and I like the first one. I didn't Tokyo, really. Yeah, Tokyo Drift was good. I, did, I, did, I will say, I will say, Tokyo Drift was good. Was that number three or was that number four? I think that was number three. That was number three. Yeah. It yeah. Was. Yeah. Let's move into the next topic here. We have Big Hero 6. Uh, this oh, is an yeah. animated show by Disney. I, I have seen a trailer for this, actually, recently. Same here. Um, but I don't usually watch Disney movies besides Frozen, which I'm not supposed to tell anybody. But uh. yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't watch a lot of Disney movies. Oh. It was pretty cute, the trailer. It was uh, good fun. I mean, it's funny. Did you guys see the, the robot? I mean, Big Hero 6 is the first Disney animated film to feature Marvel comic characters. Yeah. I love how he's putting the armor on the guy and then it all just falls off on him. Yeah, it's very um, comedy driven, I can tell. It has some serious plot points. I think it's really interesting. I think it's going to be very, very good. Area where Frozen drug people in, it'll probably be good for the yeah. same. Yeah, it seems like it's a bit more um, aimed at like older, older kids, like 14, 15, it seems like, just from yeah, some of the humor and stuff. I don't know, it's pretty interesting. 14 and 15 year old humor. Uh, I was on Facebook yesterday and I saw this thing that had to do with Frozen, right? And I don't know if we're allowed to get a little R rated on this podcast, but <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to just inch into it a little bit here. Uh, so basically, I clicked on this link, right, on Facebook, and it showed oh, no. Frozen Childhood Gone or something like that. And you scroll down and you saw the Frozen chick, the girl with the, the touch, and it freezes everything. Uh, what's her name? Yeah. Uh, Elsa, Elsa or whatever. Elsa, Elsa, yeah. It showed Elsa getting sister. Oh, I was like, oh god, my childhood is officially ruined, and I quickly exited out of the... 
I've, I've heard that the um, it's been the Big Hero Six is released um, November seventh in the U.S. Yeah, I think it's already been released like yesterday for yeah, us. Yesterday, yeah. Are you guys going to watch it or planning on watching? It? Oh, I have seen some clips and it's pretty interesting. Um, I have not seen the movie, the full movie though, but just parts of it. Tomatoes, it's got 91 percent of critics that have given the film a positive review. That that's really good. That so it's got a really good review from Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I think it's a movie that adults will like as well. Instead of you know, it's it's very different for a Disney kind of movie in my opinion, and it is like teamed up with Marvel Marvel too. So it's kind of like you know. I never really watch a Disney film in the cinema or go to the movies, so, but um, I think this one I might actually go and watch it. The problem is I have no money. <laughs> so I only get to see the movies mom wants to see. And she doesn't want to see this, so I'm stuck at the house. Yeah. Alright, so moving on to the next topic here, we're actually going to start transitioning into more of the games area. So the first game that we're going to be talking about is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare after release. So as you guys all know, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare dropped the 3rd of November. Um, and I, it sounds like I'm the only one here who actually has the game. <laughs> But yeah. that's okay, I can talk about this for a little while. Um, I talked about this a little bit before the show actually started, and for any of you guys out there who watch this podcast and don't know what Advanced Warfare is like, if you played previous Call of Duties and you're going to buy this game, if you didn't have above a one-point KD, playing this game and holding that above a one KD. Um, <laughs> there's a whole new look on the game. So, like, you have these EXO abilities. You can jump around the map, do all these things. It's it's great. It's a very, very good game. Don't get me wrong. I'm not Ghost. Ghost was absolutely garbage. But Advanced Warfare, first game in the series made by Sledgehammer Games, is spectacular. But you have all these new aspects. It feels like you can get shot from a million different directions. You're never safe. Yeah. Best way to, th to do things is to always move. You never stay in a spot because you will get killed. <laughs> You always want to be moving, you always want to be using those EXO abilities to the fullest. Now, I've played the campaign, longest campaign they've had in the entire series, yeah. best campaign since Modern Warfare 2, and it was just like a movie. Wow. It was very good. I finished the campaign last night. Kevin Spacey is, is, an, is an amazing actor. Oh, wow. Okay. He's great. He's great. And buying, this is the first time I could say that buying Call of Duty Advanced Warfare strictly for the campaign would not be a mistake. Wow. I really want to get this game now. You really got me excited for this game. Yeah, you like the story a lot then, right? Yeah, and Definitely. I didn't like the ghost story. Um, the Black Ops series story was okay. There wasn't anything wrong with it. Yeah. The Modern Warfare series story was really good, and this story, if it doesn't beat it, it matches it. Wow. Yeah, is Advanced Warfare like a sequel to Modern Warfare? It's just nope. another game in the lineup, right? Another game in the lineup. Yeah. Shirley yeah. Baker does some voice work too, doesn't he? Shirley Baker? Um, I'm not sure. Probably there's there's quite a few I, like you know, the big actor, hit characters. The actor from John Carter, he he's in it. Oh yeah, I can see that. I I believe he's probably, I think he's the person you play as. Yeah, yeah. Huh. He was in the live yeah. trailer as well. Have you seen the live trailer when he's um? Oh yeah, he is in the live trailer, isn't he? Yeah, yeah I, I think he's the around. person you play as. Yeah, I think he's the one that you play. Yeah, but I love I love the live trailer. I found it was really funny. Yeah, yeah I, I think, think it was, it was the, the best one since Black Ops Two. Yeah. Um, Ghost was kind of the downfall of Call of Duty. A lot of people saw yeah. it as, okay, well, Call of Duty's done now because, yeah. like, I'm going to go over the ratings real quick for the past few Call of Duties. Call of Duty Ghost got an 8.8 .8 review rating from IGN, and that is a much higher review from IGN than what it should have been by the time the game was done. Okay, it got an 8.8, .8 and Call of Duty Advanced Warfare already has, like, a 9.5. Wow. That is the highest rated Call of Duty from IGN that there's ever been. And it hasn't been released for very long, has it? It's only been, it hasn't even been a week. It'll be a week no. tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that should say something. The actor's name is Tyler Kitch, sorry. So again, transitioning to the campaign, uh, there's lots of big hit actors in the campaign. So like the person you play as, the person who who's who like plays alongside you, and then there's a female actor in there who plays alongside you. And then there's, uh, oh geez, I just said his name and now I can't think of it. Kevin Spacey? Yeah, Kevin Spacey. Those four people are spectacular it kind of makes this campaign what it is also like in all the other call of duties there's always been one or two people that are really really good there's yeah. four in this game this game has wow. four actors that you don't want to see go there's five technically yeah, so you're really connected with like uh people that's pretty yeah. good how long is the campaign is it is it longer than any other previous uh, call of duty well i will i can actually tell you that right now hold on 
I sat down and I played the campaign here. It's got about an eight hour play time. If you were to sit down and play it all the way through, it's got about eight or nine hours. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's like, and that's just playing it on stop. normal. That's not playing it on like hardened or veteran. Yeah, and all the bonus stuff. Yeah. Because that's so. the thing I was looking out for in the Call of Duty's. Is the campaign because I like the campaign, but they, they, they finish very quickly. And I want, yeah, I want the one where I can keep playing it and playing it, and then this hopefully is the one you, that I can... Yeah, you look at like modern warfare campaigns, they're usually finished in what three or four hours, exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's this is like twice that. All the other developers for the Call of Duty series, it was Treyarch Infinity Ward for the longest time, and now they have Sledgehammer Games. So instead of there being a two year game cycle where they get the release of the Infinity Ward game all the way till the release of their game, which is technically two years because you have that in between. Now you have three years. You have three developers that gives you three years to work on a single game. That's why it's such a better game than before. And we can only hope to see the best. Now I'm really, really scared of the next Infinity Ward game because Modern Warfare 3 was bad. Modern Warfare 2 had a lot of problems when the game started, lots of glitches and all that yeah. stuff. And you know, if we get too many more bad games, the Call of Duty series is just gonna keep dropping. So they just need to keep things going up. Yeah, that way people don't How are the lasers? Lasers, like the guns? Yeah. The Quantum EM-1 laser is actually not a very good gun within the multiplayer. Yeah. Um, it's a very long range gun. You can you can use that gun, but you have to stay at a long range, kind of like a sniper rifle. It's good just depending on how you use it. In the campaign though, there's a mission where you get the Quantum EM-1 and it is a very good gun within the campaign. It's like insta-kill. The thing with campaigns though sometimes that kind of sucks is when they like end super quickly. You don't get to really connect with the characters and like understand the story as much. Because, I mean, multiplayer is, like, a really great aspect, but it's kind of nice to have some backstory on, like, why and that way you can really understand the characters and everything else better. And also, campaigns sometimes function as, like, a tutorial to kind of teach you how to play. You're not going to get that in Advanced Warfare. Advanced Warfare is very much like a movie, and the campaign is separate from the multiplayer. Uh, also, I will show you how in-depth they went with getting the sounds and how dedicated these people were to making a great Call of Duty. The person who made, like, the sounds and stuff for the game, the boost exosuit sound literally came from a nail gun, okay? <laughs> so he couldn't figure out what sound he wanted to use for the exo jump and, and everything else. So he was working at his house one day, and the nail gun, when he was shooting the nails into his floor, he's like, this sounds really cool. So he brought his entire, like, nail gun and all this stuff <laughs> into his office and started recording it and <laughs> adding other stuff to it. And then one day he was um, laying in bed, he keeps his recorder with him everywhere he goes, just in case he hears something that he can use in the game. And in California, they have these trash things that have, like, extendable arms that pick up the trash cans and dump it. Oh, yeah. Well, he was laying in bed, and he heard that go off outside of his house. And he's like, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. He literally went out and asked the dude who was driving the <laughs> trash truck if he could drive around and record him for the next half hour. <laughs> so that just kind of shows how dedicated they really were to making a good game. And That's, I like, really that. funny. I love everything I'm hearing right now, and I'm, I'm hoping to pick up a copy sometime this week. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm definitely thinking that it's going to have a... I don't think it'll win Game of the Year. I'm not going to say it's going to win Game of the Year, because it probably won't. But what it will do is it'll be a contender. I, I'm pretty sure it'll be a contender. Yeah, I think it'll get people interested again in Call of Duty, because some people yeah. have kind of left it since... Uh, Ghost. You have the, yeah, sequels. Since Modern Warfare 3 was, I think, when it really started to hit downhill. Yeah. Um, Black Ops 2 had a 9.2 rating by IGN, and it brought it up, and then Ghost just... Personally, too interested in Call of Duty, um, in first-person shooters in general, but it seems very, like, interesting, like, like a dedicated um, game. That's what I like about certain games as well. You can have a ton of fun. When they're really online. dedicated to it, yeah, instead of, like, games. oh, just another game to make. I can tell you how I'd be at playing Call of Duty. I'd be the guy to keep getting killed and keep <laughs> missing everyone. I can't aim well. I'm getting better at it, got, though. Um, has this game got zombies? Uh, actually, yes, it does. It does have zombies, and they implemented their own zombies. So now Treyarch has zombies, and so does Sledgehammer Games. They both do zombies now. Oh. At the end, you have to play through all of these survival exo waves, and at the very end, after you get through, it's on a prison map, at the very end, yeah. There's this bonus wave of zombies that come like chasing after you, and they're really, really fast. If you guys have seen World War Z, they're like that. Wow. Yeah. And because the fans, they wanted a zombies mode in this game, Sledgehammer Games listened to that, and now uh, with the first DLC, which drops January 2nd or 1st, I believe, they are actually putting in a zombies mode. Yeah, that's kind of cool. What about on, uh, online maps? How, how, how are they? Um... Yeah, is that part of the game? 
they're a lot like the Treyarch maps, but they did kind of take... Um, okay, so I'll give you a quick example here. Infinity Ward is really good for taking maps and just kind of throwing crap on there, like putting uh, a giant rock and just being like a maze. Yeah. And funny. Treyarch is really good at making maps that are like an arena, like an untouched area. If any of you guys played Black Ops 2 or anything like that, uh, the map Raid is like completely untouched when you start. There's no broken glass or destroyed cars. It's all perfect. It's an arena. It has set paths, and it's it's equal on both sides of the map. Uh, so they kind of did that, and then they also threw in some of that random stuff around the map. So it has those set paths, but it's also got some Infinity Ward. All right, so moving into the next topic here, we have Grand Theft Auto V versus the next-gen Grand Theft Auto V. Uh, from what I've seen, there isn't a whole lot of differences besides the fact that in Next gen, Grand Theft Auto V and PC, you are now, there's now a first person mode. So like you can be in Los Santos in first person view. I'm, I'm mm. comparing the, the graphics that look a hell lot. Of yeah, they I do agree. definitely. They it look is. a lot. A lot more crystal, more sharpness, more. Yeah. Beautiful, really. I'm sure they'll do some kind of modification on the game, game sto storyline or something to make it a little bit different, you know what I mean? Like a bit more features. Mm. And yeah, they could. I mean, I wouldn't pay for the full wax you know, for that game. I'm, I'm definitely buying this game for PlayStation 4. Three, um, when it first came out last year. September last year, I think it came out. Yeah. And, um, I paid uh, completely the story storyline, the campaign, and then uh, after that, I just left it. I didn't even play it online. The multiplayer is one of the best parts of the game. Um, I played the... I bought it for the 360 and the PS3 last year, uh, mainly just for YouTube purposes, but... Yeah, there's a lot of uh, YouTube um, videos about it, wasn't there? Also, on the next-gen GTA 5 and PC, they have animals in the multiplayer, as far as I know as of right now. So, like, on the previous one, they didn't have any animals in the multiplayer. So, like, there's sharks in the campaign when you swim around, but there isn't in the multiplayer. I'm not too into GTA, personally. So this one's going to uh, be re released for PS4 and the Xbox One. Yeah, and then shortly after that, it'll be released for the PC. I think yeah. it's released for PC in either January or December. But for Xbox One and PS4, it's released on November 18th, I believe. So, it so is fairly soon. coming up soon, isn't it? Yeah. So it is um, expected to get, get greater open world freedom. Oh yeah, for it sure. Improve, it must have improved storytelling and mission. Yeah. There must be quite a lot of changes. That, not much differences, but there must be some changes where we couldn't do in the in the previous console, but you can do in the next. Yep, I yeah. think it's going to be very, very good. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of um, newer consoles is uh, they're not as limited to the things they can choose. Open world is like really fun in a lot of cases. That's what I enjoy a lot in games, being able to like explore on your own. Kind of like in the new Zelda, they're coming out. Just saying that's going to be open world, kind of like the original. Interesting thing is, um, they've mentioned that Rock Rockstar's uh, new cruise, which you can um, carry over from Max Payne 3. Yeah, that's, that's cool. You can carry over their, their crew into uh, GTA 5 or the. So, now moving into the next topic, we have Minecraft 2. Uh, I, I have a feeling that a lot of you guys play Minecraft that are on this podcast and the ones yeah. who watch it. I actually, when I started playing Minecraft, I started playing it like two years ago, something like that. So not very long ago, um, and I was a complete scrub, okay? So my friend first told me about <laughs> Minecraft, and he's like, I was like, no, I'm not playing Minecraft, that's so stupid. I thought he was talking about, like, World of Warcraft, and I'm like, that, <laughs> no, that, I'm not playing that, man. And so, so I actually sat down and I played it, and I was so bad, because I couldn't break a tree. Like, I was, <laughs> instead of holding down the right mouse or the left yeah. mouse to break it, I was tapping it, and I was like, this yeah. won't break. <laughs> so many people have done that. I think I did that the first time I played it. I'm like, oh, why is it not working? And now I am not a Minecraft expert by any means, but I definitely know what I'm doing when it comes to Minecraft. I, I'm horrible yeah. at building. Very bad designer. But anyways, <laughs> back on topic, they are talking about making a Minecraft 2. So if you recently didn't know, Microsoft actually bought rights to Minecraft, which makes me extremely sad. We'll talk more about my Microsoft um, mm. hate later on. So they bought the rights, huh? That's yeah. Sad. They buy dollars. out companies and like, oh, for yeah, this, like, and then screw it up now. It was like two point something billion dollars Jeez. that they bought it for. Wow. Uh, that it shows you like, how much it's worth. Give so much money and then like, screw it up. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Microsoft is very much known for their sucking money out of things, uh, releasing something just to get money out of it. And I shouldn't say much, because Call of Duty does that every year. 
Microsoft is very much known for sucking money out of things. So they're coming up with the possibility. Now, this isn't confirmed, but I've heard a little bit about it here and there. Of releasing a Minecraft 2. Instead of doing updates for Minecraft, they release a new Minecraft. Uh, that's kind of... Yeah, I think that's just so that they don't have to buy another copy or something. Yep. Well, it's Minecraft right now, but there's a... I've heard stuff saying, oh, they're making a Minecraft 2, and it's basically just so that way they can it's add... Rumor. Yeah, it's, it's a rumor. Um, so that way they can basically just add more stuff to it, and then people buy it, and then they get more money. And so I've also heard stuff about them not letting you put on texture packs without paying a certain amount of money to <laughs> buy your texture wow. packs. You have to buy your character skins, stuff like that. So... Wow. They're really trying to cut down Minecraft and well, not cut it down, but they're trying to, to squeeze money out of it, like yeah. Microsoft. Like they always yeah. do, don't they? Just like with Xbox Live and all those other gimmicks yeah. they try and get. But you know, I'm not, not saying Xbox hate, Live is bad. I'm not gonna hate on Xbox Live because if you look, I, like I was a PlayStation guy because of my issues with Xbox, I was a PlayStation guy. And if I compare the PlayStation Three to the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty wins hands down, other than graphics were better, but the way the system ran was better for Xbox. Because yeah. of their Xbox Live, they could put money into it and make it better. And I don't know how uh, Minecraft 2 is going to work. It's basically a game about building anything you want. How do you add to that? Uh, texture pack, well not texture packs, but like adding new things to it. Like they just added horses, well they ha added horses a while back, but they just added like um, getting meat from sheep now and stuff like that. Oh really? So, yeah, but you could do that on the same game. The sequel will make it sound like they're making a new one. That, that's what they were doing before, but Microsoft didn't own it. Next topic we have here is PlayStation versus Xbox versus PC. I, I honestly prefer PC for um, general gaming and uh, stuff. I just like its many uses in gaming and how you can actually choose your own hardware rather than being stuck with um, um, a console with you know set hardware that you can't change. So like PCs never really can get out of date because you can constantly upgrade and change and still be able to play the same games being really kind of a thing that you can have like in your living room or so and just like sit down with your friend or so and just start playing you know kind of easy and it's a lot more simple for some people and the controls are sometimes better you know being able to hold a controller it's smaller than a mouse and keyboard and it's just you know nicer to just sit down chill and play you know yeah. you get a lot more glitches and stuff using on the pc rather than ps4 or do you think it's the same you get the same kind of um problems I feel like you have more problems on a PC just because of technical issues. Yeah, like but if you know how to work a PC, then it's not really a problem. Well, if you know what you're doing, then you won't have that problem, though, so... Yeah. I've always it's been just... a console man myself. The farthest I've ever gone with PC is basically just Minecraft. I've only been doing that for the past couple of years. Um, I've learned a lot, though, and especially with my YouTube making, it, it's helped me out a lot. Um, I personally prefer consoles, um, but if we go in depth here, we talk about PlayStation versus Xbox versus PC. Graphics-wise, PC will always have that upper hand. Yeah, because you, know? you can always choose what you want. Exactly. Um, and the way it runs, I, I think it's kind of a tie. Depending on the game, you know, just figuring out what's best on what. Because obviously there's games that are better... For example, Call of Duty. Call of Duty is obviously better on a console than it is on a PC. Well, yeah, control-wise, I would say. Yeah. So it just kind of comes down to the game itself. And personal preference as well. Yep. So. And, you know, you always say, what, what console should I buy, you know? Buy the one that your friends are playing. If you can't afford a PC, most people can't afford a really good PC, you know, Choose the, the console that your friends are playing. So if they're all buying Xbox Ones, buy an Xbox One. If they're all buying PlayStation 4s, buy a PlayStation 4. And about that, like, there's so many different consoles, like, oh, yeah, we were just playing Xbox. Like, that was, like, so one month ago. Now we're moving on to this new thing. It's like, oh, crap, now I have to buy an entirely new console and stuff for, like, 400 more dollars or so. But I guess PC, you can kind of run any game, except for ones that are specifically de designed for a console. For me personally, I think it's uh, whatever I feel I would enjoy the most out of that game, whether it's on a PC or if it's on a PS4 yeah. or Xbox One. For yeah. me, I personally find that a PS4 is where I have a more enjoyable um, gameplay. So in terms of graphics-wise and the co the whole controller, you know, using the controller, not a mouse, and I get I get more enjoyment out of uh, PS4 because I know that yeah. a lot of my friends actually do have a PS4, and a lot of people. You ask, they always have a PSP, PlayStation rather than a Microsoft, you know, Xbox. So um, that's just my personal preference. But what about you, Tori J? I think all TS games play better on the PC. Yeah, I definitely. 
I tried playing one of my Epa free sits and they were like, no, this isn't working at all. Is also, it easier to aim with the mouse when you're playing a first person shooter? There's no aim assist. I, I think it's I think it is um easier to move around with keyboard. With you can be more uh, precise, but yeah, it takes practice, lots of practice. I think it's um, hard to, like, um, if you're playing Minecraft on the Xbox, for example, I just think yes. it's hard to, like, have to move around and stuff, and, like, just doesn't feel as comfortable to me, it but doesn't. that's just my thought. Speaking of comfortable and controls, I'm not as much of a fan of the controller for the PS4. Me neither. I don't know why they had like triangle, circle, and those other things instead of just using traditional A, B, X, Y. I don't know. And then, like, well, uh, to be honest, triangle, square, circle, and X were before A, B, X, Y. PlayStation was before Xbox. I know, with, a, with a PC, you always have to constantly upgrade your, upgrade your PC every single time to get the best graphics, to get the best you know, hardware, for the memory. Well, whereas, with... a, whereas a console with a PS4 or Xbox. You, you don't have to, they always update it themselves, if you go into the system um, settings, you just update and it updates it for you. Whether it's to You're do still it. waiting to play a game. You can, oh. like, are you talking about software updates or like um, yeah, hardware so updates? Hardware for like, you don't notice hardware changes for games on consoles because those games okay. will always run just fine because exactly, they're specifically yeah. designed for that console. But with PC, you can run like any game, like a retro game. Or yeah. like a really new third-person game that just came out, so you're gonna have to change it. But with a console, you'd have to buy an entirely new console, anyways, just to play those games. Yeah. Like Wii and Wii U. Like, what's so, the difference? They're basically the same. Just, got, just yeah, have yeah, to you, buy it for the new games and new in, hardware. In that One has a remote, and the other has a gamepad. Um, so, what else do we have to talk about here, guys? It sounded like you were going into something else there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, World, uh, World of Warcraft is coming out. I also, sequel? It's a, it's actually an expansion. Um, it's an upcoming fifth expansion following Mists of Pan Pandaria. Oh, it's an expansion, huh? Is that the one with going yeah. back in time? Yeah, I don't really follow PC games too much besides Minecraft because Minecraft is big. Um, just one last thing I'd I'd have to say is about the PS4 controller versus the Xbox controller. What do you guys think about that? I prefer the Xbox controller because I think um, it's more comfortable. PS4. And the left and right shoulder buttons just feel kind of weird in my opinion. I think that I they know. feel weird on the Xbox controller, to be honest. And I, I have a 360 controller, and my friend has an Xbox One, and they kind of changed the Xbox One controller from the Xbox 360, which is yeah. fine. I mean, they changed the PS4 from the PS3. But I feel like the reach going from your triggers all the way up to your left and right bumpers is such an awkward... Yeah, moving. I don't I've like heard that. a ton of people hate the new Xbox One controller versus the 360. 360 controller yeah. was my favorite. I, I really do like the 360 controller. Um, I have a Scuf 360 controller, and I love it. Um, I plan on buying a Scuf PS4 controller, and I'll see how they compare. I'll probably compare them in a video. Yeah, except I've, for the D-pad, though. It's terrible. Oh, yeah, D-pad on Xbox is bad. I don't, did they I've, fix that in the Xbox yeah. One controller? No, yeah. they did not. <laughs> Well, I don't have either system, but I like to look at the Xbox One better than the PS4. I, I like the PS4. I, I think the PS4 controller from the PS3 is a much more improved controller. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would say so, too. Wise, yeah, it's more, more comfy in the hand, so I'm glad they changed the controller. Yeah, and I think the shoulder buttons are better, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. I like, I like the, the way they can give your fingers a snug underneath. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Tori, what's your personal, just this name one controller, PS4 or Xbox One? Oh. I'll get hate for it, but Xbox One. Xbox One? All right. How about you, um, Drax? What's your controller? Um, I like the Xbox controller. What about you, boss? Um, PS4 for me. PS4. Yeah. Um, comparing the Xbox 360 controller to PS3, considering I haven't really had time with an Xbox One, I'm going to have to say the Xbox 360 controller. But PS4 versus Xbox One, I think I'm going to go with the PS4 controller. And that's it guys, we have run out of time, we hope you enjoyed our show. Don't forget to click on the thumbs up button and subscribe to our YouTube channel NextGenX and tell everyone that you know to do the same.